So to calculate the mean, it's quite straightforward. So let's say I have the data set of five observations. So this is a body height. So 163, 164, 165, 166, 167. In this course, you have to learn how to do it manually, step by step. Okay. So first thing, you need to sum up all the data. Okay. Just sum it up. Okay. And then divide by the number of the data. Okay. So the, this is a each observation. So S1 mean the observation, first observation, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So here we want to sum from the first observation until the fifth observation. So this is a, all the value. And after that, divide by the number of the observation. So this is how we calculate the mean. And remember, whenever you report a mean, it's very important to mention the unit because there's a unit of measurement for each of these observations. So the mean of this five data set of these five students is 165 cm. For variance, we can square root to get a standard deviation. Okay, so I will show you how to calculate the variance first. Before you calculate the variance, as you can see, as compared to the mean, we have an additional symbol. So this is a mean that we calculate. So that means that before you calculate the variance, you have to calculate the mean of the symbol first. So just now our mean is 165 cm. So then the first thing that you have to do, I will suggest you to make a table for the calculations. Okay, to show the step-to-step -step calculation of the variance. Although there's a shortcut key in your calculator, scientific calculator, which can give you the variance of standard deviation immediately after you enter all the observation. But for this course, you have to know how to calculate the variance and standard deviation manually. To do the manual calculation, it's better to arrange uh, your data in a table. So it don't need to be in the sequence order, in a larger to smaller. It doesn't really matter. So you have your first column with all the value. Then after that, you just calculate the second value, which is the each of this value minus the mean, which is 165, and you get the product. Okay. Then after that, just take this value and then square the value. So in this case, it's negative 2. When I square it, it's 4. Negative 1, if I square the negative 1, is 1. 0 is 0. 1 to 1, 2 become 4. So after we minus the difference, so we want to measure the difference from the center. So the center is mean. And then square root 10, we have to sum it up. Okay, we have to sum all this value. Okay, and this is what we also call sum of square. So in many occasions, we will make, we will calculate the sum of square in the state when we conduct the steady state. So after that, then we can put the data. So the sum of square is 10. So the product of this sum of square is 10. Divide by n, n is number of observation is 5. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. Remember, you always need to put the unit. Okay. Because just now, each of these is cm. If you square the negative 1, it will become 1. And if you square the cm, it will become square cm. So after that, usually we will report the dispersion in terms of the standard deviations. So for standard deviation, we just need to uh, square root the variance. So this is a variance. Okay, we just square root the variance, then we will get the answer. And remember, after we square root the variance, the unit will return to the original unit. It's no longer square cm but cm centimeter so these are the um, measurement the parameter that we use to, to describe a data set okay so you have just learned how to calculate the mean variance and standard deviation and the medium you already learn how to do it when you do your post plot if you spend enough time in these lectures and also do all the quiz and tutorial then now you should be able to describe what is the descriptive statistic okay 
the differences between the descriptive statistic and inferential statistic we will understand a bit more when we move to the next few lectures about hypothesis testing. And you also know how to explore the data, okay? Why the histogram is useful, okay? How the distribution curve was generated, okay? What does it mean? And also explain the parameter, okay? They used to describe data, including the sh shape of the distribution, the central tendency of the distribution, and also the dispersion of the distribution. And then we, for each of these parameters, we can calculate the measurements. So for the center or tendency, we can calculate the mean. For dispersion or median, for dispersion, we can calculate the variance or standard deviations. 